Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, president and founder of Angel Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's Tuesday. I hope you've been enjoying the Agile Expert Series every Monday. We have had some really, really heavy hitters on, and I appreciate all of you who continue to subscribe and continue to join us for that podcast. It is incredibly exciting. Lots of good things going on. It's just magic is happening. We're getting good information. If you haven't had a chance, it's every Monday for the last several Mondays and for the next few Mondays going forward. Uh, coming up, we still have Mike Cohn, Ken Rubin, lots of good ones. So please make sure you stay tuned for that Agile Expert series. Today, we have a topic we want to talk about. Now, this topic happens to also be the number one reason why organizations fail doing Agile. So today's topic covers the number one reason. Here we go. The number one reason is the inability of the product owner to channel what the stakeholders' needs are and to computate and write a well-defined user story that's easily consumed by the team. So it's the telephone game, the whole trying to get the idea out of the heads, uh, heads of the multiple stakeholders, composing that into a thoughtful, conglomerated idea and then uh, understanding what the results should be and then having it measurable in such a way that you can get a tangible story that's easily consumable by the team that makes sense. So obviously there's a lot to that, right? It's not just a one size fits all thing. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of go in and dive in and talk about a couple of the things that I do or a couple of the things that we use to help make sure you're writing stories the right way. The first thing that I want to talk to you about it comes from design thinking slash behavioral driven design. And this is where you need to make sure first that you understand who your persona is. So number one is understand your persona. You want to make sure you understand who your target audience is, who you're trying to appeal to. And that audience could be an external audience, an external facing product or service, or it could be an internal audience. If what you're building is going to be providing a service that's going to be consumed internally. So it's important for you to understand who your audience is and what their needs are. Now, the best way to understand your needs, obviously, is to uh, do some type of assessment, whether it's a peer overview or whether it's watching people physically use your product or conducting a survey or user research. There's lots of different ways to get that information. But the important part is that you hone in and discover who your target customer is and make sure that you have them pinned pretty well. Second thing you need to do is you need to invest. So you need to remember, now this was made popular by Bill Wake, William Wake, and what he said was when you invest, it's an acronym, he said we need to make sure that we avoid dependencies when possible, that your story should be independent, that this should be negotiable, valuable, estimable, sized appropriately, and testable. So we'll go through each one of those quickly. I was for independent, avoid dependencies. And it's negotiable. It should never be written as a contract. You will do this. We will do that, right? V is valuable. That's the obvious one. If it doesn't provide both business value and consumer value in such a way that it's tangible, we probably shouldn't be doing it, right? And then we have estimable. Now, this one's interesting because what he says is you should be able to somehow estimate the size and scope of the work that you need to do. Now, notice he didn't say you should be able to describe how long it's going to take because that's a different question, right? So you should be able to size up the work compared to other work that you've done in the past or compared to other work that you'll be doing soon. So you need to make sure your stories are estimable. S is for sized appropriately, meaning they should be small enough to fit in a single iteration and a single sprint. And then T is for testable, meaning that we should be able to test everything that we're doing. So number one was making sure I identify our persona. Number two is making sure we're investing in writing good stories. Number three has to do with the actual composition of the story. Now, this is where it gets interesting because there's lots of schools of thought when it comes to composition of a story. You know, I've heard the one, the most common one comes from behavioral driven development or BDD. And this is where you say as a role, as a who, I would like to do what, or I want my feature to do this so that it can provide this benefit. And then the acceptance criteria is written using the Gherkin method. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Gherkin, it's given this context when this event happens, uh, then this outcome should occur. Right. And that's kind of the composition of what a story is. And I love this. Now, once again, I want to make sure I mention this is a template. So behavioral driven design is absolutely amazing, in my opinion, because it helps us zoom in on the things that we should be doing and how we should communicate so that both a technical person and a non-technical person should understand can understand what needs to be done and what we need to test in order to make sure that it meets the acceptance criteria and provides an increment of value to the end consumer. 
That makes sense. The other method is a hypothesis-driven development or hypothesis-driven design. Now, this isn't one that's talked about often in the Agile community, so I want to make sure we talk about it today. So this is used a lot for people who are doing research, right? This is used a lot for people who are trying to innovate. So a lot of times they'll say, we believe that this capability will result in this outcome. And we will know that it succeeded when this measurable signal happens, when this happens. You know, um, I believe that the temperature in a room will decrease when I close the front door to my home because I live in Florida. And I'll know it has succeeded when I stop sweating and I feel the beautiful air from the air conditioning. I don't know. I'm just throwing something out there. But the point is, it's proving a hypothesis and it's making it simple so that people who are technical and non-technical alike can understand exactly what you're trying to do. Because I think that's one of the keys, right? We want to make sure we have some alignment around uh, what we're trying to do with the story. And it, it allows you to do A-B testing. It allows you to have better acceptance criteria. Just all around, it allows you to make sure you're doing things right. So with that being said, once we have the stories written correctly, once we have the invest model followed, and once we have the uh, personas identified, it should be real easy for us to crank out stories that are meaningful, things that can easily be consumed by the team, and things that are easy to, to actually execute. But then comes the big question. Here we go. Here comes the monkey wrench. If I have hundreds of those, how do I know? How do I judge which story is better? Or which story should be done, done first or last? That's the million dollar question. I get it all the time. And the truth is you need to do a balancing act. Uh, so if you picture a Venn diagram, three concentric circles, you have to focus on three different aspects of every story. One of those aspects has to do with consumer. So how valuable is this to the consumer? Is it something that's a deal breaker? Is it something that uh, is very important, but not a deal breaker? Is it something that they don't really care about? Is it something that is really high on their, it would be really cool if it did this list? You know, those are the type of things. And I usually use Moscow, uh, M-S-C-W, Moscow, to assess the consumer need, to assess the value to the consumer. The second value is a business or strategic value. And for this one, I associate priority. Now I know what you're thinking. Every time somebody comes up with something with priority, it always comes in as either high, really high, or really, really high. That's not the priority I'm looking for. For me, when I say priority, and I think the confusion comes in, people like to associate the word priority with importance, and that's not true. I mean, after all, when was the last time somebody came up to you and said, oh, I have these really unimportant things I need you to build? <laughs> and nobody does that, right? So if that's true, Priority doesn't equal importance because everything is important. So priority equals urgency surrounding the important items. So out of all these important items, which ones are the most urgent? And that should be something that we're able to determine, right? And then the third criteria has to do with technological feasibility. Is this something that advances our ability to have better infrastructure architecture? Is this something that allows the team to have uh, easier time coding in the future? Is this something that gives us a sustainable platform that we can build upon? You know, there's lots of questions here that are, that, that, that are around sense and sensibility and common sense. And I think that sometimes we don't take those things into consideration. So I think that you need to leverage invest, leverage the three values, make sure you totally understand who your persona is and focus on behavioral driven uh, design and investment. And if you, if you can focus on the behavior driven piece, unless you're doing research, in which case, hypothesis driven is perfectly fine. And I think that's something that a lot of other coaches and trainers miss that you can have some variability in your stories and that's okay. The key is that we want them to be simple, easy to consume, easy to understand, well-written and designed in such a way that it answers the questions and lets us know that what we're doing is right on track. So I hope you found this information useful to you. This, like I said, is the number one thing that people struggle with. So it's amazing that we can get it in in one daily standup. Uh, but I encourage you to take a look at your stories, put together a set of criteria, critique your own stories, and try hard over the next several sprints to make those better. If you do, I promise you'll have better Agile. As always, we encourage you, if you have a question about this topic or others, reach out to us. Learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay Agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care. We'll talk again soon.